We've been deep in Ethervolt limited testing, and with countless drafts and sealed matches under our belt, we've created the top 10 list of most underrated, overperforming cards in the format. That means that these cards were just way better than any of us thought they would be. With this list, hopefully you'll be a little more prepared when you see these cards in your packs over the next few months. So without further ado, let's jump right in and see what we're working with. We'll begin with a pair of honorable mentions. Now these cards aren't here because they overperformed. They're here because if we don't mention them, we'll get a bunch of comments about it. Untethered Express and Ridge Scale Tusker are two of the best cards in this entire limited format. And while they are both stupidly powerful and easily first pickable, they didn't overperform. They performed exactly as well as many thought they would. The Tusker is Mythic Rare level limited quality, and the Express might as well be Renegade Freighter 2.0 on steroids. Again, only mentioning these because they were so popular, if you see either of them while you're drafting, first picking them, probably a solid move. On to the list itself, we'll begin at number 10 with Walking Ballista. Don't worry, there are only a few rares on this list, but we just had to mention the Ballista. I already thought this was going to be a good card, but I didn't expect its impact to be so impactful. I'm sure some of you can relate to this, but dropping the Ballista with even just a few counters on it was game winning. Being able to untap with the ability to add another counter is insanity. With so many 1 and 2 toughness creatures running around, including Servos, it's no surprise that an angry Triskelion clone can do this much damage, sometimes destroying an opponent's ability to attack a block or even crew vehicles. And while you won't see this card very often due to its rare status, I felt it was important to point out specifically because it was so much more oppressive than I thought it would be originally. High tier rare pick in my book, this thing is dumb. Number 9, Aspire Patrol. This card makes the list for a few reasons. First, it detains a creature which has huge tempo implications, allowing you to paralyze your opponent's best creature for essentially two turns. Second, it's a 3-2 flyer. If there's one thing I learned from grinding limited Aether Revolt matches, games are decided in the air. The ground is gummed up more often than not, and without proper removal, flyers are tougher to deal with than expected. Not only does the patrol deal with a huge threat for a few turns, but its three power in the air is a quick clock in a format with a less than average amount of answers to flyers. Already a good card, Spire Patrol deserves additional praise. Coming in at number 8 is Sweatworks Brawler. I really underestimated this card, a lot. 4 mana for a 3-3 three, three just didn't strike me, even with Menace, but wow did I underestimate Improvise on this. Even if you only improvise it half the time for a single mana, it's still bonkers. The way the creatures line up on the battlefield, a 3-3 three, three with Menace creates some bothersome blocks for a ton of decks, which many players will often avoid and simply take 3 to the face. With the added cost reduction of Improvise, the Brawler is one of the better red filler creatures. I'm sure this card won't get taken in draft until the latter half of the pack, but if you can get it there, that's solid value. The Brawler is better than it looks, trust me. Next up at number 7 is Welder Automaton. I did say this was the best Automaton, but I didn't give it nearly enough credit. 2 mana for a 2 1 ended up being perfectly serviceable early game, and then the ability provided the exact late game inevitability we were talking about during spoiler season. In a format where a lot of games end up a stalemate on the board for many turns, Welder Automaton breaks that without needing combat. This is the best automaton in the cycle as far as I'm concerned, and if you're in a red deck, certainly worthy of a mid-pack pick, doesn't look like much, but it is strong. Kind of on a roll with red cards, Reckless Racer gets our number 6 spot. Now, I never thought the racer was bad, never. I didn't think it was this good. That 3 toughness, huge. Rummage, huge. First strike, gigantic. The racer does a surprising amount of work for being a 3-mana creature. Half the time, it's a powerful attacker with a relevant combat keyword that lets you cycle cards. The other half of the time, it crews vehicles like a champion and still lets you cycle cards. Do not underestimate the power of rummaging in Limited. You do have to discard first, but I never found that to be a problem. Reckless Racer is one of the better red uncommons, easily, extremely versatile, can fit into anything, and provides you with some solid combat utility and card filtering. This card is very, very good. Entering our top 5 is Scrounging Bandar, believe it or not. I was surprised this ended up making it on the list, let alone so high up, but you can't argue with results. The Cat Monkey's versatility is too strong to ignore, and its disgusting synergy with vehicles is awesome. In response to the upkeep trigger on the Bandar, you can use its ability to crew a vehicle before the counters are gone. How awesome is that? Anyways, not only did the Bandar help make relevant creatures bigger, especially flyers, that's always awesome, but it was also a reliable revolt enabler on your own turn that you could use whenever you wanted. And the counters it comes with synergize with other green cards in the set. 
Believe it or not, the Bandar is actually quite good in this limited format. It kind of hits everything you wanted to. I know, I'm surprised too. Coming in at number 4 is the only other rare on the list, and it honestly could have been even higher. Lifecrafter's Bestiary is... I honestly don't even know how to explain it. Totally my bad not talking this card up enough. The Bestiary drew any green deck as many cards as they could handle, and it was a solid improvised rock, and, for no reason at all, it let you scry one at the beginning of your upkeep. I don't know why I didn't see the potential originally, but after pulling it in multiple sealed events and seeing its power firsthand, I'm convinced. The best Jerry is not to be passed lightly in draft. Whoever ends up with this card will draw a million other cards easily. With no problem at all, it's an absurd rare card draw vending machine. Into the top three, some of these will probably be a bit obvious. Number three is Cruel Finality. I know, how could a removal spell overperform? It's a removal spell, everyone knows they're good, but here's the thing. We got a lot of flack from players saying that we overvalued this card in our Best of the Rest series. Well, I'm here to tell you, we absolutely did not. I'm honestly a bit surprised too. I never would have thought that three mana for minus two minus two even at instant speed would make me this happy, but with the addition of Scry 1 it has. I think it's a testament to how this format is shaping up. It's so combat dependent that a combat trick like this could swing an entire game in your favor. I can't remember a time I cast this card and didn't completely dumpster someone because of it. As with previous cards on this list, Scry 1 is just delicious gravy added onto a powerful card. Now, don't get me wrong, in other limited formats, Cruel Finality would not be all that good, just at all. But in this specific one, it's quite strong. It's the beauty of mass ground combat. Number two is Dawn Feather Eagle. You'd be hard pressed to find another common that drops and creates this much board pressure instantaneously. The trigger not only gives you a free anthem for the turn, but also a relevant combat mechanic and it has flying and three power, which are both incredibly important in this ground based meta. Reading on social media, a lot of players found themselves on both sides of the Eagle's Wrath and I think the cat's out of the bag. This is one of the stronger commons in the set for limited, able to turn a game on its head immediately upon cast. Based on a lot of grinding, the amount of matches won due to casting the Eagle were impressively high. I'm sure I'm not the only one who saw this card dominate games, easily worthy of a top 2 slot, this thing is dumb. Okay, number 1, we finally made it to the end. Can you guess which card overperformed the most in Aether Revolt Limited? If you guessed Pacification Array, you'd be right. I'll be the first to say that I was totally wrong about this card, massively and totally wrong. Pacification Array is bonkers. I don't know how I could ignore the newest iteration of Icy Manipulator, but I did. Let me assure you, the array was a combat nightmare for players, and the two cost activation didn't stop anyone from wrecking the battlefield with this. Threatening to tap a crude vehicle, giant creature, or sometimes one in the same, the array set players back turns at a time, giving the owners a chance to stay in the game on the ground. You can use it for defense, for attack, technically both if you want, and it's a nice cheap rock for improvise if you need it. I legitimately feel bad for not calling this powerful when I first saw it. If you ended up against the array or playing it yourself, I'm sure you saw its power, and while I wouldn't say it's a windmill slam going forward, it definitely exceeded expectations. Without a doubt, Pacification Array is a crazy strong card. Don't let it go too far in your draft packs. That's going to do it for our list of the most underrated slash overperforming cards in Aether Revolt Limited. What about you? How have your experiences been? Which cards did a ton of work for you? I'd love to hear what you have to say and we'll chat about it. Interested to find out where the other hidden gems in the set are. We're back to making videos, so expect more content throughout the week, including lots of deck techs. So stay tuned for all that awesomeness. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Aether Revolt has just released, which means that you can order boxes right now and they'll be shipped right to your door. This second, super easy, TCG Player is selling boxes for a cool $90 each. You know that's cheaper than most stores, right? If you don't have a local game store or yours is charging way too much, TCG Player has your back. Just click the links, helps the channel, win, win, enjoy.